Hi guys, welcome to Flying Grip Academy. Today we are going to discuss what is Java and what is class and object. So now basically a class is a group of objects which have common properties. It is a template or blueprint from which objects are created. It is a logical entity. It cannot be physical. You can able to consider class as a person and he will be having a certain attributes like person can be identified by the unique id there may be number of persons who is having his name as john and there are many persons who is having name as desi how can a person can be identified based upon unique id so that example other id it can be identified and person every person will be having a name and he can be identified by age gender and city and he will be having some hobbies so those we can able to categorize as methods eat study sleep and play and so on you can able to include if there are any methods you would like to include in this manner you can able to identify the class so let me illustrate with an example you can able to consider a class as a house now if you want to have a house attributes you can able to categorize the house attributes as hall kitchen drawing hall swimming pool bedroom and so on so based upon your necessity so now if you want to access this class so now you need to identify based upon object object is an identifiable entity with some characteristics state behavior understanding the concept of objects is much easier when we consider real life examples so around us because object is simply a real world entity object is an instance of a class you have considered house as a class and now you can able to associate the house whatever the contents inside the house as an object so now here everything you can able to consider as an object for example if you are going to consider tv as an object it will be having certain attributes like length dimensions pixels and so on so in a similar manner you can able to use the object which class and object so basically java class is defined as a blueprint or a template it serves as a plan for creating objects an object in other hand it is an instance of class so what does class contain practically it contain data members and methods so what does data members contain so you can able to declare different data types as we have seen integer string double float and other kind of things so if you are going to consider a particular student so he will be having a roll number which is declared as integer string declared as a name string you can able to declare a subject name and double marks percentage so finally the percentage marks will be having a precision similarly methods so if you want to set a roll number you can set a roll number if you want to retrieve the roll number but you can use a get method and if you want to set a name you can set name and if you want to get name you can get name similarly you can able to set a subject name and you can able to get the subject name so you can able to set the marks and you can get the marks and finally you can able to get the percentage so creating a class so you can able to create a class by using a class followed by the class name so here i have given a class followed by the class name which is pradeep so let us see so this syntax so why a java program is going to start with public static void main so now here we have given a statement system dot out dot print ln hello pradeep so now here class is going to start with the flower base and end with the flower base similarly main method is going to start with the flower base and end with the flower base so now what is public let us see in java public is an access modifier that makes the main method accessible from any other class 
This is necessary because JVM need to access and execute the main method. The next one is static. Static is a keyword that allows the main method to be called without creating an instance of the class. The main method is static because it serves as an entry point for the program and the JVM can invoke it without creating an object of the class. So we will discuss each and every one so with an example. Void. So void is a uh, keyword so which doesn't have any return time. Main. Main is an entry point of every program so it starts from the main. So JVM looks for a method exact signature to start the execution of the program. So next one is string array arguments. It is the parameter that allows the passing command line arguments to the Java program. The arguments parameter is an array of strings. It can be used to provide input to the program when it is executed through the command line. So let us execute this simple. So now I am going to open the basic editor called notepad. So I have opened the notepad and I have pasted this particular program and we have to save the program based upon the class name. So file save as you need to create a work directory in C drive. I have already created a folder. So but I will again create a folder. So new folder I am going to name a Java examples. So in this folder, I am going to select Java examples is a folder name which I am using. So the class name is Pradeep and you have to save every program by extension Java. So save under all files. So now I am going to open the command prompt. So I am going to use a cd backslash. So now I am going to switch to the directory cd space Java examples. So now I need to compile the program based upon Java C file name dot Java. So now I need to compile the Java program Java followed by the class name. So now it has shown the output hello followed by name. So whatever the name which we have given in system dot out dot println. So now creating a object. So class contains data members and methods. So what is the object how you are going to call the method. So now within the class we have declared a x equal to 5 which is a data member. Data members are defined data types. So string, integer, float, double and like that. So next methods. So here we have declared a method public void method. So this is a method name. So public uh, is uh, given as a access modifier and we have given a void so it doesn't have a return type so if we have given a int so at last of the end of before ending the method you have to return to the main so here we have not written anything so because you have used a void so the, the name of the method is method so now here you are going to print a statement so system dot out dot print ln called called method by object so now here we are going to write this particular declaration part outside the main. So in previous program we have mentioned this uh, system dot out dot print ln within the main method. So but here in this program we have defined all this part outside the main. So here we have defined outside the main. So now here we are going to declare a main method public static void main string array arguments. So now the main important thing is class name. So how to create an object? So creating an object, you are going to create a class name. What is class name? Class name is class object and you are going to create an object. So what is the object name? My object is an object name. So now you are going to create an instance of class by creating a new. So here you have declared a new followed by class name. So class name is same thing. And here you are you have added braces. So let us uh, see the explanation. So what we are using. So here we are going to declare an object name equal to new class name. So why we are using. So here we are using a new operator. So which is going to dynamically allocate the memory. So it is called the instance allocator or dynamic allocator. So here we are using a flower brace because 
it is going to invocate the constructor of the class. So, Java defines a default constructor by specifying the particular braces. So, here it is going to reference the object in the stack memory whereas the actual object is created in the heap. So, because of that reason we are going to use the declaration of objects. So, what is the need of this brace? So, we are going to it is going to check the particular object so which is accessible. So, it is a going to create an instance of the class and this particular brace we will see later. So, now we are going to call the particular data members and methods. So, by this particular object, so you are going to call this particular method. So, object is going, going to access data members and methods. So, what is a method, uh, what is the object name you are using? So, now your object name is my object and my object dot x. So, now you are accessing the particular x value. So, what is x? x equal to 5. So, 5 value should be printed. So, again you are going to call this particular method. So, where you are going to call? So, here you are going to call the method. So, now my object, so object is a access object you have created by this object you can able to call the method. So, now we have called the method. So, by this we have called the value x equal to 5. So, and we have called the method from this particular program. So, let us uh, compile the program. So, class name is class object file you can able to save the program java. So, now I am going to compile the program java c class name dot java. So, now you need to execute the program. So, the this is called by object. So, here you can able to create a multiple objects. So, for example, class object 1 equal to new class name. Similarly, you can declare a class object 2 equal to new class name. So, you can able to reference the object 1 also. So, for example, here object 1 is created. So, now, so here object 2 is going to reference the object 1. So, the same memory location here it is using object 1 and object 2 is using the same memory location. So, because of that reason you can like this you can able to create a object references. So, creating the multiple objects. So, here you can able to create a multiple objects class name is student. So, here we have created a student. So, what is student? Student is a name of the class. So, here student is a name of the class. So, if you are declaring a method with the same name as student, it is said to be a constructor. So, here it is said to be a constructor. So, we have declared a constructor here. So, next what kind of uh, things it is taking? So, here already declared some variables which are global variables. So, which we have declared outside this particular thing. So, now here name. So, name equal to student name which is passed by the user. So, next student age, student grade. So, the three parameters it is accepting as a arguments. So, age. So, whatever the user is going to pass the arguments that will be set. So, now here we have a method called void display information. So, it is going to print the name, age, and grade. So, these are the things which will be printed by the display information. So, now main method is a uh, is a entry point of the program. So, now what it is doing? So, we have created an object student1. So, we have crea we created an instance new student. So, we have given a three names. So, Jan Doe, Jane Smith, Bob Johnson and we have given a parameters so, here we have given a name, 
we have given age 20 22 21 and the uh, grade so grade in percentage we have written 1 2 3 so now so student 1 student 2 student 3 are three objects student 1 student 2 student 3 are so three objects three objects which we have created so next what we are doing so we are going to put in the student 1 information so where it is going to go so here if you are going to consider so from here the control goes to the here so object 1 is going to student 1 is object 1 student 2 is object 2 student 3 is object 3 so whenever this parameter is called so it will go to this particular point and it also go to this particular point so now it has to display the student information so it has set all the names of the student john do 20 age and 85.5 so whenever you are going to call this particular display information so which student information you are calling student one information student one is object so display information you are going to call name age grade so similarly student two information display information it is going to call the student two information so next student 3 display information it is going to call the student 3 display information so like that it is going to call each and every time so let us compile this particular program so i will compile the program so now compilation has done successfully and we need to execute the program java student so now here we have set the student name age and grade if you like this video please like share and subscribe my channel thanks for watching